Hi, my name is Brian Stewart and I'm a herpetologist. We're currently sitting in my office at the research laboratory of the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences where I work. As a museum curator, I have two primary responsibilities. One responsibility is curation. So I'm responsible for overseeing the uh, research collection of amphibians and reptiles. We have about 200,000 preserved specimens of amphibians and reptiles. These specimens date back to the late 1800s and are a uh, invaluable research tool. Um, so much of the stuff, just even the stuff that comes from North Carolina, so many of these species no longer occur in the localities um, where they're documented from in these collections uh, because they're under uh, you know, parking lots or um, urban development have wiped them out and so forth. So these are uh, eastern coral snakes. Uh, they're a venomous species. Uh, they're the only member uh, of this group of snakes. Uh, they're related to the uh, uh, same family as the cobras and sea snakes and so forth. Uh, and their range, they occur in uh, southeastern United States, and their, their range limit, the northernmost um, part of their limit, just extends into North Carolina. So we're right at sort of the, the, the northern limit of the range of the species. Well, this is an extremely rare species in North Carolina. Um, but uh, one example of how uh, our collections are used by scientists uh, uh, can be demonstrated with the coral snake. So we have records of coral snake specimens. In fact, some of the specimens in this jar um, from a physiographic region in North Carolina called the Sand Hills. Uh, and we have specimens from the 1920s, 1930s, um, all the way up into the 1960s from the Sand Hills of North Carolina. Uh, there has been no record of a coral snake since the 1960s from the, coral, from the Sand Hills part of North Carolina. Often when you have a venomous snake, you have one or more non-venomous snakes that occur in the same area that look very much like it. In the sand hills, we have a, a harmless mimic of the coral snake called the scarlet king snake. It looks very, very similar to, uh, to a coral snake. And if we didn't have these actual specimens, like I'm holding right here in my hand, we would probably dismiss many of these early records from the 1920s and 1930s where people said, I saw a coral snake in the sand hills, we'd probably just dismiss it as a confused identification with uh, uh, the more common scarlet king snake. But we are certain uh, that the distribution of the coral snake was much larger in North Carolina in the past than it is today on the basis of having these specimens. So herpetology is just a sub-discipline of biology, and so I have degrees in biology, an undergraduate degree, a master's, and a PhD, uh, all in the fields of biology. I'm interested in how many species of amphibians and reptiles occur in the world, where they're distributed, uh, how they evolved, uh, which species are related to, to which. Uh, and much of my research uh, entails using data from museum specimens and also DNA sequence data from museum specimens to try to decide what is one species and what is another. So here I'm just removing some specimens um, from a jar, from our shelf, to show you that these are not just specimens to look at, but to actually use. And I'm going to tell you the story of a recent species discovery. These are preserved specimens of a salamander called a nobby newt, and these come from the Southeast Asian country of Laos. Nobby newts uh, in Southeast Asia only occur at very high elevations. We find them uh, near to the top of mountains. Uh, but nobody in the past has really studied uh, the geographic ranges, the natural history, the ecology. Um, or even how many species of Nobby Newts occur uh, in countries like Laos. And I have a, a graduate student uh, who is also a herpetologist, uh, and she is from the country of Laos, and she's very interested in salamanders. And so she started visiting all these different high elevation areas in her home country of Laos and collecting some samples of Nobby Newts on each of these different high elevation areas. She brought them back here into the museum and she sequenced their DNA 
and she looked very carefully at the morphological variation. How these animals differ in size, how they differ in coloration, how they differ in shape. And after analyzing the variation in morphology and genetics, she generated some hypotheses of species boundaries. And she determined that this one is, was an undescribed species. She gave it a scientific name for the first time, Tylodotriton podicthes. Uh, podicthes means in the Lao language, fish with feet, which is what uh, people in the Lao language call salamanders. So this is an example of a species that was just described to science in 2015. And the original specimens that were used in that study are housed here at the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences.